just briefly kind of explain what you've been doing at Honeywood for some people who might not know. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> so I've been here for the best part of almost a year now. So we started by coming in and seeing how you're currently using your iPads because you've all got your own and, and that's all the way through the school. And uh, some people felt that they perhaps weren't being used as effectively as a learning tool as they could be. So we stripped it right back and looked at what the school does really well anyway and how we could start to embed the iPads as a real positive, impactful learning tool. And that's taken a long time. It doesn't happen overnight. So we've worked with staff and we've started to work with students and digital ambassadors to make sure that's happening right across the school. Yeah. Okay. So... What do you feel like your experience has been like at Honeywood? Because it's quite a different school to most schools, quite unique. So it is unique, and I think that's one of the things that I love most about it. So I was saying to uh, Mrs Lee Allen this morning that when I speak to new schools who are thinking about using iPads, uh, Honeywood is one of the schools that I mention as an amazing example of not just technology use, because what you're really doing is using it to support your independent learning strategies and personalization of learning so that's sort of different from the technology but the technology is really the iPads are supporting that and when I show a prime of great primary school that I show case and then I bring them on to Honeywood because I think you do it really well yeah so how does our school differ from other schools in the way we use our iPads because I um, expect you've been you've seen quite a few people using iPads in school yeah. so your ignite study showcase um, learning sort of pedagogy that goes around that you follow the fact that staff are starting to use you using Padlet a lot more aren't you to sort of ignite that learning videos but the fact that you can walk into any lesson and everyone's following their own pathway through it so you've got a, a, a some success criteria or an objective but actually some you might be doing something different and mess and the person sat at the next table. I think that's how do what's you unique that, about that. Yeah. How do you think that helps like different learners progress because everyone works at different speeds. Yeah. Some people are more independent, some people need support. Do you think it works for everyone? I think having, for example, in maths where you're sending people off to videos that they can use to help on their iPad, that's be bespoke to that child, isn't it? So they're getting the knowledge they need in a format immediately. They're not sitting and waiting for the teacher to come round and help them. So there's all the active learning going on rather than a class teacher saying, well, today we are doing X and everyone having to do what their X is, whereas you might be really bright and think, well, I've done that last year, so I don't want to do that. So what you're doing is you're stretching, but you're supporting those learners who really need it as well. Okay. So, so can I push that back at you? Yeah. So do you feel that it's unique and do you feel that that sort of personalised learning approach works? And yeah, why? definitely. Yeah. It's really been kind of helpful for me because, you know, I, I'm quite, a, I'm a very independent learner and sometimes, you know, if I, if, like, if you go back to a primary school setting where, or, you know, where it's, you have to do this, 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 you have to answer this question now, this worksheet mm -hmm. now, um, I don't think it gives you enough time to stretch and explore stuff. So in Year 7 and 8, we did a lot of exploring our own topics. Mm -hmm. So we'd have one kind of focus, yeah. but we got to go in stuff we were really interested in. And that's um, what I, you know, that's... It helps you develop as well, personally, because yeah. there's no point in teaching something you already know. It's yeah. good to learn things you don't know. So it's good yeah. to be able to yeah. know what you need to know and then... And that's sort of that metacognitive learning to learn, isn't yeah. it? So you're learning skills that whether you want to go to university and read law or you want to go and do engineering or that, that difference in subject area, you know how to solve those problems yourself, you know how to find out things, you know how to produce things, create things. I think it's really important. And I think that's what sets you apart. So what, if I look at some schools where they're just teaching from the front and the children are just doing what the teacher says, we call that kind of spoon feeding. Mm -hmm. So then they don't have those independent qualities that allow them to yeah, learn it, when they have to. We, um, you know, when we go into work and stuff, we've already got that yeah. independence yeah. to do something. Really? You can't We're not going to be sat there, you know, waiting for someone to tell us exactly what to do. We have that initiative, which is really lovely. Yeah. 
and resilience. Yeah, yeah. It's it an is. Teachable skill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's, it's all that we call them soft skills or twenty first century skills. They're, they're called lots of different things, and that's what employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. I was working at Leeds Business School like this week, and we were doing exactly that, looking for those top skills that employers were looking for because they're at the graduate level. They are going and looking for jobs. So how can you show that? And they they have one to one iPads as well in their post grad program, and so we've been looking at ways that the iPad can show employers when they go for an interview that they've got some of those skills that you've been talking about. So I think if you went to some of the comparable interview, you would probably be able to demonstrate those equitably, if not better. And you know, you're probably at least seven or eight years old. <laughs> yeah. That's very nice. Okay. So um, what kind of elements of the school, what um, kind of groups of people um, from the school were you really kind of enjoyed experiencing working with? That's an unfair question. I'm <laughs> <laughs> supposed to say everybody. Um, the best part of the school, in your opinion? <laughs> I think, well I think it's, it's all, I'm going to sort of cover myself off a little bit. So I really like the way that the leadership team works here. I think they work collaboratively, so ever, it's not just one person who's making a decision and sending it down, they're, they're working together. And so the fact that they've adopted the use of technology and the approach together and then they're trying to help other staff in the digital learning team, and then they're trying to help other teachers, and then working with children here is amazing. Well, that's really nice. That's, okay. that's all we've got. Oh, okay. Unless there's anything you'd like to say. Anything I'd like to ask to, you guys. Yeah, of course. So what's the most creative thing you've ever done with your iPad? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> well, it would be music, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm seeing so, so using GarageBand to yeah. compose a song, basically, to really? make a song, which is quite difficult to do. You haven't got yeah. the resources, so it's nice yeah. to have that variety of um, And adapt it easily, I guess, yeah, once exactly, it's digital, yeah. isn't it? So mm -hmm. many in kind of English in year seven we got kind of we got to be able to write songs and stuff and like we the same English we I've got loads of videos on our iPads of like really creative like songs and po and all that kind of stuff that we created um but yeah they're, they're just a brilliant tool and they just allow you to really kind of stretch yeah, really rather stretch than yourself. having a book where you can write or maybe draw a picture or a diagram it really gives you that you know and also, you can go home, and if you don't understand it, carry on. If you want to look further, you can carry on. It's brilliant, brilliant tool, yeah. It's funny, because one of the first questions we picked up in the iPad survey at the beginning of the year, when we surveyed all of you guys, was that Safari came out as the most popular app, and we were kind of disappointed. We thought, oh, it's just looking on the internet. But when we read all the comments from the students as to why they were looking, they said, well, if the teacher says something and I'm not quite sure, I can look it up when it's relevant, when it means something, and then I can contribute back into yeah. the discussion of the class. And I think that it, 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 I learned something from that, and I think you don't underestimate yeah. being yeah. able to Google we something. We use yeah. Safari or uh, mm -hmm. I Take History, and okay. just the other day... Um, we were kind of we were in a smaller class because some of the class were in an exam, and um, um, my teacher mentioned um, some person who was involved in some war protests or something, right. and we found out loads about him. And I mentioned him in my exam, and I had no idea who he was before. Yeah. So that was really lovely to be able to look that up straight away. And now I know loads about some random American because it was relevant. Yeah, and it was relevant. It was interesting, yeah. but. Yeah, it's an amazing tool. Whereas you probably wouldn't have no. gone home and thought, I would have been, oh, what was that person? I'll yeah. go and look them up now. I would have just been writing what was written in a textbook. Yeah, that's true. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank Fantastic. you very much. No, thank you guys. Good questions. <laughs> no.